Good evening from New York. I'm David Schuster. Keith Olbermann has the night off. As the old saying goes, there are two things you never want to see being made, laws and sausages. In our fifth story in the countdown, the making of laws and sausages have collided tonight in the Republican Party's effort to delay and defeat President Obama's health care plan. Another full day of events in which the president pushed for his health care overhaul. From the Rose Garden of the White House, President Obama said that critics of his plan are sticking to a familiar script. I know that there are those in this town who openly declare their intention to block reform. It's a familiar Washington script that we've seen many times before. These opponents of reform would rather score political points than offer relief to Americans who've seen premiums double and costs grow three times faster than wages. They would maintain a system that works for the insurance and the drug companies while becoming increasingly unaffordable for families and for businesses. In an interview with Meredith Vieira on the Today Show, President Obama said that his opponents seem to be more concerned about defeating him than in helping Americans who don't have health insurance. This is absolutely important to me, but this is not as important to me as it is to the people who don't have health care. I've got health care. This isn't as important to me as, as the family that's gone bankrupt because they got a bunch of medical bills that they thought the insurance companies had covered. It turned out they weren't covered. So yes, absolutely. I am deeply invested in getting this thing done. But this isn't Washington sport. This isn't about who's up and who's down. This is about solving an enormous problem for the American people. Helping Americans without health insurance, said Mr. Obama, is why he has put reform on a fast track. Before this August recess, why is that deadline so important? Do you why even set a deadline? Well, because if you don't set a deadline in this town, nothing happens. Uh, if the, the default uh, in Washington is inaction and inertia. And there's a reason why we haven't had health care reform in 50 years. Missing the August deadline would appear to be the entire plan of the Republicans who don't seem to have an actual health care plan of their own, other than to defeat President Obama's. The Republicans' message man, Alex Castellano, sent out a list of instructions for party members in a memo this month, among them, quote, if we slow this sausage-making process down, we can defeat it and advance real reform that will actually help. Key message point, we've got to slow down the Obama experience with our health. House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer dismissed Republicans who have suggested that Democrats are rushing health care reform through Congress, quoting him, in the last 18 months we've been discussing it extensively. This is not a rush to judgment. This afternoon, President Obama summoned conservative blue dog Democrats to the White House for a meeting. Some blue dogs in the House have indicated they would like to see negotiations on health care reform continue into the fall. Earlier tonight, Congressman Barron Hill of Indiana said that important strides were made today in regards to health care reform, but he did not give specifics. In the Senate, one of the key blue dogs is Finance Committee Chairman Max Baucus. The Washington Post reports on its front page that health-related companies and their employers gave the Democratic chairman's political committees nearly $1.5 million in 2007 and 2008 when Baucus began holding hearings and making preparations for this year's reform debate. Lots to talk about with our own political analyst, Jonathan Alter, also a senior editor at Newsweek magazine. Jonathan, good evening. Hi, David. It no longer seems to be just Senator DeMint. President Obama is now pitting all Republicans yeah. against Americans who don't have health insurance. Might the Republicans come to regret turning health care reform into a political fight with the president? Well, you know, they don't seem to regret much of anything as they're on their way over the cliff. Uh, what DeMint said, where he said that this would be Barack Obama's Waterloo that they would break the president on health care. This was music to the White House's ears. This is just what they were hoping for. The Republicans have walked into a big trap where, by seeming to politicize it, by trying to make it about uh, making Barack Obama fail, um, they've gotten on the wrong side of the American people. Does that mean that this is all a shoe? There's a lot of tough sledding ahead, tough negotiations. Uh, but the president caught a break this week in the way the Republicans handled themselves. Well, and on that point, since the Republicans have made it clear that defeating the plan is their only goal, and as you point out, that plays into the president's hands, does the measure then only have to pass for President Obama to win politically? Uh, 
No, I think it has to be a, a fairly decent uh, a bill. It, it, it can't be uh, cosmetic reform. Um, but will it be a bill that pleases uh, all progressives? Of course not. Um, there, everybody is going to have to compromise. And we might end up um, with something like the energy bill that just came out of the House uh, the other week, a kind of a big, hairy, ugly piece of legislation that nobody really likes, but that does advance the debate and that can then be amended some. You know, uh, Ted Kennedy wrote a cover story uh, in Newsweek this week where he says, look, you don't get it all right necessarily the first time. Um, when they did uh, S-chip, for instance, uh, uh, people were not happy with the bill. Here we are several years later, and it's insuring 7 million kids. So you don't want, as the president says, the perfect to be the enemy of the good. It's not going to be a perfect bill, but if he puts some points on the board, if he gets something through, which I think is quite likely, uh, there will be huge political benefits for him. Jonathan, what happens if the legislation does get pushed back until after the August recess? Well, it, it, it was always going to get pushed back until then because uh, September was always when there was going to be what they call the House-Senate Conference Committee, where the House and the Senate come together and try to reconcile the differences in the two bills. They had hoped to get uh, the first part of the process completed by August 8th, where the House passed their bill and the Senate passed their bill. It now looks like that process probably won't happen uh, until the beginning of September. But the basic timetable of having about six weeks where the House and the Senate um, resolve their differences in September and early October is pretty much the same uh, as it's always been. You're going to see very, very intense lobbying uh, in August uh, and in September as everybody uh, weighs in on this, but I think this thing is far enough down the tracks right now that it's going to be hard to derail. The only ones who can do it are the conservative Democrats. The Republicans simply don't have the votes to do so. And on that point, Jonathan, if Democrats in Congress cannot get their act together to pass effective health care reform in the next few months, with the overwhelming support of a Democratic president and the control of both houses of Congress, will it ever happen? Well, ever's a long time, but uh, this is the best chance um, that there's been um, for a substantial health care reform since 1912, when Theodore Roosevelt first put national health insurance in a major party platform, in the Bull Moose platform. And it's come up uh, over and over again in the years since. The American Medical Association was totally against it. This time, the AMA has come out for it. A number of the other interest groups are for it. So the odds are, are pretty good, David. Jonathan Alter of MSNBC and Newsweek. Jonathan, thanks as always for coming on. Thanks, David.